So uh, let's get to our next guest. And <clears throat> this is extremely uh, powerful. So this is Rodion Soliad Seka. Um, it belongs to the Udege community, one of the indigenous peoples of the North Siberia and Far East of the Russian Federation. Uh, the total population is about 1,600 left. Uh, Udege means forest people. And Rodion, in a quote, says that I have started my political career since 1987 to protect our land and forest rights at the local level and continue my advocacy at the domestic and international arena. I want to know much about this. Um, over to you, Gasali. Um, thank you so much, Carson. Um, Rodian is, in my view, one of the, um, yeah, one of the most very experienced Indian diplomats out there, uh, not just from Russia, but Indian peoples in general. Also, what a lot of people don't know, he is very good at ping pong. Uh, we had a ping pong tournament, tournament while we were in New York for, for the, as a lobbying team for the World Conference, and he beats everyone, every single one at the World Council of Churches. Um, so um, aside from that, thank you so much, Rodian, for being uh, on this webinar uh, series. Um, let me start off because um, you have, you, you're such a strong person, such a strong personality. What is your greatest strength if uh, you're willing to talk about that? And how has that impacted your uh, career traje trajectory um, since 1997? Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. <clears throat> Gazali Carson and uh, uh, our distinguished co-panelist. Uh, I'm so glad to, to see all of you safe uh, and secure under this time and uh, but first uh, before moving to the your question Ghazali uh, I would like thank you and your team and congratulations it's a great idea to connect uh, indigenous United Nations and create a new dialogue and exchange virtual platform to keep indigenous solidarity to touch governance and diplomacy under this pandemic time. And also indigenous people should use the new technology as a new tool to protect and promote the human rights of indigenous peoples at different levels. And secondly, I also would like to thank you for different languages interpretation service provided in terms of access, inclusiveness, awareness, and also regional and cultural balances and visibility. And so I am so pleased uh, to contribute to this global dialogue and uh, to empower the indigenous diplomacy and <coughs> movement. So with regards to your uh, question, uh, it's easy, but it's also a um, difficult question. I was born in, in, in a completely different political um, situation. I was born in Soviet Union. So, and uh, this time um, it was a completely different political agenda. And then uh, we saw the demise of Soviet Union. We saw the era of perestroika and the current situation and uh, we did uh, a lot of hopes. So, and of course, uh, my great, greatest strength, it's, uh, it's my family, it's my people. It's a very small community, so only 1,600 left. And also my first job was a teacher uh, and principal of school after the university. I got a good Soviet education and came back to my community working with young generation. So, uh, and this is my biggest strengths, uh, my family, my people, and my advocacy. Now, thank you so much, Rodian. And um, uh, I apologize to you uh, because um, I would love to have a uh, Just, it was uh, yeah, challenging to put the, the, the right number of Russian interpreters in here, uh, but I'll, I'll promise you next time around, um, definitely with, with you and, and, and Pavel, uh, we will definitely make sure that uh, we have that feature covered. 
Um, Rodian, I've always said it, you are in a very special position um, lately because you're um, both MRIP member as well as the facilitated working group member uh, on the local communities and Indigenous Peoples platform under the Climate Change Convention. Um, so the way that I see it, um, I, no, no, I, I should not say what, the way that I see it. What are you hoping to bring to both sides, human rights and climate change? Yes, you are right. I am <clears throat> current members of, of this both United Nations uh, um, venues. And on the one hand, uh, these are two completely different bodies under the United Nations uh, structure and space with different and specific uh, agenda and mandates. But on the other hand, there is a quite strong synergy between them. Because, you know, MRIP is a human rights uh, division focused uh, on the indigenous peoples and human rights under the Human Rights Council and led by indigenous people expert in order to protect uh, and to provide the solid, strong studies and recommendation for human rights bodies under the United Nations. But on the other hand, if you look at the uh, UNCCC, in particular, uh, presentation working group under the <clears throat> climate uh, global negotiation, our uh, aim is to humanize climate change impact and commit human rights based approach. So, and it's, it's, it's helpful to promote both agenda and the both uh, United uh, uh, venues because uh, uh, climate change is, is also human rights agenda. But what is uh, more important, uh, we as indigenous peoples, we should uh, move uh, forward from the status of victims of climate change to originators of sustainable development and solution agenda in order to create uh, a strong climate resilience community at the global level and particularly at the local level. Thank you. Uh, Rodian, um, I remember you saying three words that are very important to you, um, respect, recognition and remedy. Um, very three important themes for, if you can, of course, each of the three, what would you like to see at the end of it? How would you like to see that? Any thoughts on, no, yeah, any, any thoughts on that? And what could be like the first step for Indigenous peoples? Obviously, respect and recognition of Indigenous people rights and their traditional rights, their land rights, it's a, it's a cornerstone for global IT political agenda to protect and to promote human rights of indigenous peoples. And of course we can celebrate the United Nations achievement for the last two decades. We already mentioned here the UN Declaration on Indigenous People Rights, creation of expert mechanism, permanent forum, and other thematic venues uh, on climate change, on the CBD and, and others. But uh, the era of colonial time is not ended because when we are talking about remedy, we are talking uh, about the resource colonies represented by the big industrial economy and government particular uh, looking at the uh, indigenous land as a marketplace or marketable commodity to be used for the economic growth and profit. So it's a, this is triangle, respect, recognition and remedy based on the colonial and post-colonial period. How we can create completely new agenda based on the human rights recognition. Uh, thank you so much for, for giving more context to that. Um, do you have any ideas on, on, that, on that new agenda? Is that there something that, that you really would like to see? Of course, we should work together and to increase uh, our global uh, diplomacy, our joint uh, solidarity 
but uh, unfortunately, there are still growing gaps and obstacles uh, between uh, global, regional, national, and local community level. So, uh, and a lot of work to do, and uh, we should learn, uh, we should work together in order to increase uh, all our skills and diplomacy at all levels. Thanks, thank you so much for unpacking that, uh, Rodian. Um, if, if, if you're up to, um, yeah, if you have any ideas on this, because this is something that I've been, been on my mind for a while now, um, like there is, Russia is a very big and very diverse region. Uh, I'm not talk, just talking about the, the, the country, but the, the indigenous region. Um, so how do you understand and yeah, execute, utilize representation of indigenous peoples in Russia? What do you think are the, are the challenges in that? Um, um, any, any thoughts on that? Yes, I'm Gav Ghazali. It's a very good question because <clears throat> if you would like to talk about Russia and its indigenous peoples, we should have some kind of historic background and look at the uh, uh, also Soviet time and pre-Soviet time and also at the current situation. Because uh, through the Soviet era, uh, we never raise the issue of our land rights, our traditional knowledge, because uh, all, Rush, all, all Soviet regions with indigenous people population had been effectively de-indigenized, de assimilated and integrated into the Soviet society based on the paternalistic ideology. And after the collapse of the Soviet Union and its system, Indigenous peoples uh, took on the second life for the first time. And uh, we as uh, Indigenous peoples of Russia, we were one of the last to, to, to join the United Nations agenda and to the international Indigenous peoples movement. So, uh, and that was a great time, time of hopes how we can work together, how we can seek better ways of uh, preserving our identity and land. But if you look at the modern story of Russian indigenous peoples, sadly, it's a story of a conscious strategy of erasing indigenous communities from the Russian landscape in many ways, socially, politically, legally, through the folklorization of indigenous rights. And today, uh, the Russian state uh, policy is, is more inclined to remove the last obstacle standing on the way of its Arctic dreams. Because uh, our traditional land is so rich of natural resources and the Russian economy and power is based, still based on the exploitation of natural resources. We are not stateless, but we live in the shadow of the states. Geographically, we are living in a very remote areas from both federal and regional capital center. And politically, we are still marginalized and at the margin of power. And demographically, we are fast disappearing. If you look at the statistics, we have more than 12 indigenous groups with a population less than 1,000. So, uh, and from my point of view, while we were among the last to join the United Nations agenda, and the global IP movement, we can become the first to quit it due to this authoritarian regime. And it's getting more challenging and risky to oppose the state propaganda machine 
and smart aggressive diplomacy. So uh, how can the country which uh, has not ratified any legally binding documents on indigenous, on, on indigenous rights be pointed as an example of successful indigenous policy? For me, it's uh, still a mystery, but it's also uh, the reflection of the real situation in my country. Um, Rodian, um, thank you so much for, for, for giving us like the full, your, your view of the situation in Russia at the moment, challenges, and also like what, what, uh, what, what you would like to see. Anything uh, the in these people's movement at large allies um, can, can help you with that you can see that can uh, really benefit um, the, the Indigenous People's Movement in Russia? Well, um, <clears throat> I think it's also a big issue related to, to diplomacy and governance issue. And uh, what kind of diplomacy we are talking about? You mentioned ping pong we were playing many years ago. But from my prospect, uh, uh, diplomacy is also political ping pong with two uh, roads ways. But I believe the indigenous people's diplomacy is having only one privilege to tell a true story and to tell untold and unreported stories. And of course, we need solidarity uh, from other indigenous um, peoples. And we had to learn uh, so fast and so quick after USSR collapse. Uh, and we are still learning a lot from other regions. Uh, and uh, we appreciate very much our first international contact, particularly with our Arctic indigenous brothers, brothers and sisters like Inuit, the second Polar Council and uh, Sami Council. So it's, it's, it's a very unpredictable and very serious time. Uh, uh, but uh, we should be optimistic and uh, strengthen our uh, capacity and also diplomatic skills at all levels at, uh, at the international, but also at the domestic one. Thank you, Rodian. Any final um, things that we might have not touched upon that really want to talk about, uh, curious about, or, or want other people to think about? Uh, we have like 90 more seconds. Um, so anything that you really want to bring forward? Uh, I have some uh, observation and also recommendation uh, for your great job and uh, this uh, how we can pull up as a virtual conference uh, created by your team, Ghazali. And uh, there are three, I believe, key issues from my point. Uh, I believe in youth and education. So we should increase youth participation and uh, educational, uh, provide more educational opportunity for young uh, people and young leaders. The second point, uh, it's very timely uh, to raise the issue and to promote, protect uh, not only cultural heritage of indigenous peoples, but also natural heritage. And the many reasons, including climate change. And we must keep uh, our planet and our uh, natural heritage for the sake of the planet. And finally, uh, I would like also to recommend you to continue such kind of episodes and bringing uh, together also a uh, group of friends of indigenous peoples to elaborate more uh, the governance and diplomacy issue. And also trying to invite uh, strong uh, international lawyers working for indigenous people rights and protection. Thank you so much, uh, Rodian. I will definitely take on board um, all your recommendations. Matter of fact, like one of the final episodes, we have not really come up with a format yet. So um, I think that the bringing in the group of friends, so group of friends in what we mean by that is for people that are watching and listening is like states um, that are friends of Indian peoples within the United Nations. 
Um, so definitely a very good one. I will, um, and hopefully then uh, you'll be part of the discussion. We're very much looking forward to that. Thank you so much, uh, Rodian, uh, for, for, you, for your wisdom, for your, um, for your, for your perseverance, for, for, your, for your work. Um, I know that, um, yeah, yeah, things are challenging, but like, well, we're, like you said, solidarity. And as always, I'm very solid in, in solidarity with, with you and, and, and your and these peoples and many of the colleagues that are watching um, as well, I'm, I'm sure. Thank you so much, uh, Rodian, for your time. Thank um, you. Thank you so much, Carson. Yeah. Um, that was that, that was that was that was that was powerful. That was that was a lot of information there. Very systematic, patient, and knowledgeable. I think Rodian is a ton of knowledge about the indigenous peoples' rights, especially when it comes to governance. Thank you so much, Rodian.